this video, we'll look at all ceramic crown preparation on tooth number 27, the mandibular canine. So it's an anterior all ceramic crown preparation. We're going to start with the incisal reduction. An incisal reduction should ideally provide you with 1.5 to 2 millimeters of clearance. So you can start off by placing two or three depth grooves in the incisal edge. Here we're using a 330 carbide burr to place those grooves. You can initially place it to about 1.3 millimeters. The reason is because you'll have additional loss of tooth structure when you're trying to remove those islands of tooth structure between the grooves and in the final finishing. So to give yourself some wiggle room, keep your depth grooves to about 1.3 millimeters. The height of a 330 burr that we're using here is 1.5. So make sure that you sink it only three fourths of its way. That way you know that you're about 1.3 millimeters. You can also use a diamond burr to place these depth orientation grooves. And when you're placing this, remember that these grooves should be oriented perpendicular to the long axis of the opposing tooth to provide adequate support for the porcelain tooth material. Now you can go ahead and use a diamond burr such as an 856-016 to remove those islands of tooth structure Start by reducing half of the incisal edge at a time. And then once you've verified the clearance, you can move on to the other side and remove the islands of tooth structure on that side as well. So we are giving very smooth, swift movements here to make sure that you're not creating any ditches. And then we move on to the other side. And while you're doing this, since this is a canine, you have to ensure that you maintain the occlusal anatomy of this tooth. So canine does have one cusp. So we have to make sure that we have that. We continue to preserve that instead of flattening it out. Once you've verified that you have sufficient incisal reduction, go on to the lingual and place this bevel that is basically perpendicular to your opposing tooth structure. This is to give enough bulk to the surface that's kind of coming in contact with the opposing tooth so that the porcelain has sufficient bulk to withstand the forces that the opposing tooth is going to place on this incisal lingual portion of the tooth surface. The best way to do, is, do it is to kind of follow the long axis of the tooth and continue to reduce going further and further down. This is not your entire lingual reduction, but this is to give you a start so that you have the sufficient bulk that is required um, and you'll later be increasing it when you're placing your lingual reduction as well. Once you're happy with that, our next step is to move on to our facial reduction. So for the buccal surface, uh, the, the clearance we're looking for is one millimeter of porcelain thickness. You can start with placing one depth groove in the middle of the facial wall. So the depth of this depth groove can be 0.8 millimeters. And then place another depth groove in the mesiofacial and the distofacial transitional line angles. These three depth grooves should give you enough orientation to reduce your facial surface. Once you've placed these depth grooves, you can go ahead and continue to use your 856-016 burr to reduce the islands of tooth structure between these depth grooves. Now remember that there are two planes in which you reduce this tooth structure. One plane is in your cervical component, which is parallel to the proposed path of placement. And then there's the incisal component, and that is parallel to the original external facial contour of the tooth. 
So a good way to practice this is when you're preparing the cervical component, you can sometimes align your burr with the lingual axis of this tooth and then transfer that onto the facial cervical component because whatever path of placement you place at the cervical component on this facial surface, that's the angle in which your lingual axial surface also needs to be so that you don't have any undercut. That is one way of ensuring that. So as you're doing this, you have to flow your burr along with the gingival margin. It has to be in line with that. And again, we're giving ourselves some wiggle room so that when we start finishing this preparation, we can place our margin 0.5 millimeters supragingivally. Once you're done with your facial reduction and you're happy with the adequacy of it, we're looking for one millimeters. Now you can move on to your interproximal reduction to remove that island of tooth structure and break your contact. When you're doing this, make sure that you're protecting your adjacent tooth structure. You can leave a shell of enamel while you're doing it. And you can also use a matrix band and wedges like we've used here. Or you can also use fender wedges, which are wedges that come along with a matrix band attached to them. And this helps to protect your adjacent tooth structure. You're using a very thin diamond burr over here, something like 856-012 or a 169L carbide burr, which is really, really thin and helps you to navigate through this area and create enough space so that you can take a larger burr like an 856-016 through it to establish the margin you're looking for that's one millimeter in width. So once you've prepared this part of it, you can go on to your lingual reduction and then we can come back to revisit our proximal surface for further refinement. On the lingual surface, remember that the canine does have a ridge that runs through. So you have to preserve that. And the best way to do that is to reduce one side of your lingual surface first and then move on to the other surface. All the time, placing your burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth so that you're not creating too much of a taper and keep your margin 0.5 millimeters supragingivally. As you can see, the initial reduction that we gave on this tooth structure on the lingual is helping us now because now it's oriented perpendicular to the tooth that is opposing it. Now continue to reduce using this burr, which is our 856-016 burr, and take your burr interproximally so that you can refine the initial preparation that you've done while establishing a millimeter width of a finish line. You could use depth orientation grooves on the lingual surface as well. Right now, what we did was just a planar reduction. 
where we are kind of eyeballing the preparation um, and trying to see if we are achieving the width we're looking for. An 856-016 burr has a diameter of 1.6 millimeter right at its tip. So the more you practice, you will kind of realize how much you're preparing, or you can also use a periodontal probe to measure that. Once you've completed your lingual reduction, you can go back to your facial surface, refine the preparation while moving your margin more gingerly, because remember, we gave ourselves some wiggle room, right? So that we can bring it down much later when we're refining the prep. That's the stage we are in right now. So we're moving it gingerly and we are ensuring that our margin is not going further gingerly or getting wider. We are simply refining it. And you take your burr into proximally so you can create a smooth flowing transition between the lingual and the buccal surfaces. After all our refinements, 
take a look at your preparation to make sure that you have an even width of one millimeter all across. And once you have that, you can go ahead and refine your lingual surface. Because like I said, there's a ridge that runs on the lingual surface and there are two fossas, the canine fossas on either side of it. So to bring that into your preparation, you can use a football diamond and use that to reduce the surfaces on either side of your lingual ridge. Be very gentle and slowly remove to its structure on either side of this ridge while also smoothening out and rounding all of those sharp edges that you may have created when you are preparing your tooth. And slowly now round off your incisal edge. Everything should be smooth and round, nothing sharp. Now is the time we switch to our slow speed and back to our 856 or 1.6 burr and start refining our margins and smoothing out all the small scratches that we would have made during our tooth preparation. Run this burr all across from the facial to the proximal to the lingual surfaces while also rounding off our incisal edges to give us a smooth flowing prep that just looks beautiful to look at. And here is our finished product. Take a look at how it has an ideal taper. It's not leaning to one side. It's, it's straight, it's parallel. The margins are super gingival by about 0.5 millimeters. And we've continued to maintain the lingual ridge that we were looking for.